All right, guys. Welcome very much uh, to the first ever edition of the Card Buff Podcast. Um, before I get really into it here, I have to apologize for the video quality here, the lighting. I wasn't expecting to do this for another couple weeks. Um, but some news came to light today, and it was going to be probably the premier topic that I started off my uh, my my show with. So we're going to get to it. Uh, we're going to get to it today. So um, you're just going to bear with the, the little bit of blurriness from this uh, front camera you got going on here. But um, for those of you that don't know me, I'm James Buffy. Uh, I've had my own business in the card industry since I was 10 years old. I've been working with blowout cards for the past decade. Um, I've got 20 years of experience in, in the industry here. So um, I've seen <laughs> I've seen a couple things. But um, this is a new one. This is a new one. So today, um, Hannah over at She Collects Cards uh, broke some news in regarding the Lando Norris 4 autograph uh, from 2020 Topps Chrome Formula 1. Um, if you haven't given Hannah a follow yet, uh, I would definitely recommend doing that. Make sure you check out her video as well. Um, some really great information in there. Um, and I have a little bit more to uh, to add to the situation. Uh, I've been abreast on, on the issue here for about a month or so. So before we get into the uh, the actual issue at hand in the video, um, I have to give a couple couple thank yous and a couple shout outs. Um, Chatty Boy, Vettel1, 33Value, um, who am I forgetting? SDC Sports, Story PDX, Noah, um, oh, and the homie MQH, the rest of the members of the pad, you guys know who you are. Um, real team effort, compiling all this stuff. Um, so I just want to thank all those guys again for working with me, helping me with uh, images and information. So really what's going on here is... The news came out this morning that a specific card in the 2020 Topps Chrome F1 set had an issue with the autograph. Um, Lando Norris has two different variations um, of autographs in the set. He's got what is considered his normal autograph, and then a second one, which is considered the Lando 4 autograph. Um, if you take a look at your screen now, you'll see on the left-hand side, uh, very easily you can tell the difference between what is the um, the regular Lando Norris autograph, and on the right-hand side you see the Lando 4 variation. It's signed in print just says Lando and then his number four. So the copy on the right hand side, um, there's a question with the authenticity, whether or not that is a real Lando Norris autograph. So how I got involved in this situation is I'm an owner of one of the Lando four autographs. Um, and I, on October 18th, I received this email from, from eBay. Uh, eBay reached out to me because PSA had reached out to them and had asked eBay to contact me and asked me to contact PSA um, regarding this card. So you guys can uh, read the email here. Not much, not much of note in there, but um, I did talk to PSA on the phone. I also talked to Tops after that. Um, my PSA conversation, um, it was brief. Uh, basically, they didn't really know too much. Uh, the bullet points of that conversation were that Tops reached out to them, not the other way around, which is important to know um, that this was a Tops issue, not a PSA issue. Um, PSA didn't really have any specific information to me to tell me about what was going on. They just told me that uh, Topps reached out to them. There was an issue with the autograph, um, and that Topps had asked PSA to ask me to return the card to PSA because my copy was PSA graded. Uh, return the card to PSA. PSA would then return the card to Topps. Topps would apply the regular Lando Norris sticker, send it back to PSA. PSA would regrade the new card and mail it back to me. So, um... For those of you that don't know, there's a huge value difference between the two copies, um, thousands of dollars. So I obviously declined, um, and I asked them to put me in touch with someone at Tops who might be able to shed a little bit more light on what the real issue was with the card. Um, so it took a couple weeks, but I finally got a call from Tops, and they reached out to me, um, called me up out of the blue and said, you know, there was an error in the application process, in the sticker application process, where they were their exact words, an error in the sticker application process. Um, I pressed them for a little bit more information, but they wouldn't really confirm or deny the authenticity of the autograph. Um, literally no specific information what whatsoever. Um, but they went ahead and um, told me pretty much the the same thing that PSA said. Please send the card back. We'll put a new sticker on it. We'll send you the, the, the fixed, fixed card. Um, so I, uh, I asked for someone who was a little bit more in the know about the situation, and um, they said that they would have someone call me back same day. That was about six days ago. I haven't heard back from anyone yet. So that's where my personal situation stands. Um, so I guess we'll take a step back and um, 
for those of you that didn't see Hannah's video, basically she summarized kind of what I just told you guys, uh, but she had some recordings with her conversations with um, with Tops, and Tops had told her that she received an illegitimate auto, were the words that um, were given to her. Now, the wording's important because it's different wording than what I received when I spoke to Tops, and the important thing to remember is that Hannah physically called Tops, so she just got whoever... Whoever she got, whoever picked up the phone is who she got. So just out of the blue, hey, this is my problem. Um, for me, on the other hand, I got someone who was working with PSA. They reached out directly to me. So I would think that they were at least briefed on what they were going to be talking about before they called me. So that's uh, important to note that, you know, there is a little bit of difference in just calling the direct customer service line and having the company reach out to you um, for a matter that they they know of and have initiated. Um but Hannah's video raised a couple good questions, which is um, if this auto is not Lando Norris's, you know, then whose is it? So who signed the stickers? Um, pl plenty of different options there. Um, was it Lando or was it someone else? We hope it's Lando. Um, but someone else that could be a ghost signer, a clubhouse signer. It could be a secretary signature. Um, there's examples of stuff like that dating back decades. Um, for those of you that don't know what those are, uh, essentially all three of those things are the same thing. Um, it's basically when someone else signs an autograph for a player or a president or whoever it might be um, on their behalf. <clears throat> it got really popular when baseballs were passed around clubhouses back in the 50s and 60s. Um, presidents started doing it, having their secretaries sign all the time because they had just didn't have time um, to sign letters and stuff like that. So that's um, that's one example of what could have happened here. Another example, you have the auto pen and stamp uh, option, which is basically just rubber stamp onto some ink, onto the cards stamp ink boom done uh this happened with cards a couple times in recent memory the Dak Prescott 2016 autographs and the Seth or uh, McFarlane Orville autographs are the two um, biggest ones that come to me right now in recent memory so you have both of those uh both were very easily identified it's literally the exact same signature every time that's a stamp duh um so those were easily identified the cards were returned to the manufacturer the player or actor um went ahead and re-signed the correct cards and they were redistributed to those people that had them. So easy fix, easy to tell, um, but that's another option as to what an illegitimate autograph could mean. Um, the third is there could be aftermarket alterations. Um, someone could have wiped the autograph off and wrote in Lando 4. Um, so those are the three real possibilities for what an illegitimate autograph would mean. Um, and at the end of the day, it really just comes down to the authenticity. Um, that's what we're wondering about is this an authentic Lando Norris autograph or is it one of the three things that we just talked about and it's not an authentic Lando Norris autograph? So before we get into what it could possibly be, we probably have to take a look at the cards themselves. So um, with the help of my friends, um, I was able to compile images of all seven uh, Lando Norris autographs. So right here you have copies number one and copies number four. You have copies number six and eight copies 14 and 15 and finally this is my copy this is the 19 of 15 it is a PSA 8 it is a PSA cert number 6302426 which is now um, since been decertified and is the only PSA copy um, in existence that um, passed through PSA before this uh, attempt to recall by tops so that's it just seven and all seven you might have noticed were signed on gold refractors. There have been none confirmed on the regular refractor of Lando Norris number to 74, none on the gold waves to 50, none on the oranges to 25, none on the rebels to 5, and definitely not on the super refractor. Um, so only on the golds to 50. And it is worth pointing out that while we have identified seven copies, there is always the possibility that there are more out there, um, either ones that we just that have been pulled that we, we don't know about, or that are still sitting in sealed boxes somewhere. So definitely an option um you know when we first found out about these uh when i say we i'm referring to the the group of owners of these cards uh, we're a lot of us are in contact um but we we speculated there was probably somewhere between five ten probably no more than 12 copies um out there and that seems to be pretty accurate so as of now it sits at seven um and finally uh lastly here's here's a one slide of them all together for you guys so probably a, a good image for you guys to keep um, if you're, uh, you're interested in this topic. So you can see, starting from the top left is number one. There's all six raw copies, and then the final one, number 19, is the PSA graded copy uh, at the end. So let's, um, let's go ahead and revisit the 
three things that we talked about earlier about how the autograph could be illegitimate now that we've taken a look at them. So all you have to do is take one look at um, any of those <clears throat> any of those copies I just put up, and you can tell it's not an auto pen. The autographs are clearly different. Um, so 100% not an auto pen, not a stamp. That's just not going to happen. Um, every auto autograph would be completely identical. Clearly they're not, so we can rule that one out immediately. Um, the next one would be your ghost clubhouse secretary sign, or whatever you want to call it. Again, we're gonna we're gonna say very, 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 very times fifty billion unlikely. Um, normally, with stuff like that, it's someone who is either signing tens of thousands of autographs a day. Like you're just talking nonstop signing, 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 signing. I'm too busy. I don't have the time. And people that are otherworldly famous. No disrespect to Lando Norris. He's famous to me. I love him very much. Um, otherwise, I wouldn't own one of his Lando fours. But um, not not going to fit the bill for someone who would probably have a, uh, a ghost signer or a secretary signer, um, especially when you consider that he signed all the other stickers. So it, it's very difficult for me to believe that he went ahead, signed all his stickers, signed all his dynasty cards, and then in the middle of there had someone come, someone else come in and si uh, sign nine cards on his behalf in, in completely different um, form. So that's uh, just not plausible. So that one's probably uh, out the window as well. The third option is um, aftermarket alterations. Someone, you know, wiping down autographs and rewriting stuff on there. And now, while that can happen, um, the only way that that would be plausible is, one, if we don't know, if we've never seen a card come out of a box sealed like that, and two, um, we would have to have the card coming, the first thing that we'd have to see would be the card coming out of the box. So if someone sees one come out of a box first and then more starts showing up on the secondary market without evidence of them being pulled live, um, that's that's the recipe for an issue because someone sees that there's a potential vari variation um, that's worth a lot more. They wipe off the auto of their copy, write Lando 4 on there, and away we go. Um, so let's take a look here at some data and figure out if that's a possibility. So on this slide you can take a look and see the giant arrow there points to the sale date of a couple of the Lando Norris uh, variation the Lando 4 autographs that had sold on eBay recently it is important to note that the first sale date there is June 5th June 5th is the earliest sale date that I could find there's another one in June and then we have another one in September and another one after that which I excluded from this list but the important one there is the one on the bottom June 5th now we need to find if there was a copy that um, got pulled from a box before that. So there are, to my knowledge, no full videos, no full videos of um, of anything that shows a Lando being pulled, a Lando 4 being pulled. However, we were able to recover these images. So on the left here, we have our Lando 4 autograph that is serial numbered 4 of 50. On the right, is a screenshot after that card was pulled um, on Instagram Live by um, Triangle Cards 24-7. So, kind of close, kind of close. You know, we know it was pulled live. There's there's an image. But that screenshot can be anything. So, going one further, um, we now have a screenshot on the left-hand side of the Instagram Live video with the comments. You can see, actually, in the background, the packs from the box, and then in the comments, you can see people saying uh, stuff such as, well, that pays for his box or his boxes, stuff like that. Giving the allure that, um, or at least to me, beyond a reasonable doubt that this actually happened. This is a reputable, break, a reputable breaker as well. So there's very, 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 very super duper minimal chance that any of this would not be authentic. I, you know, I, I bet my life on it. Uh, and then on the right side, going one step even further, we go ahead and we have the screenshot of the actual photo from his the iPhone photos, the user who took that, with the date and the time. And you can see there that that is July 21st uh, after 10 p.m. So that card being pulled out of sealed product after we saw a copy sold on eBay. So there's no chance that these are aftermarket alterations. Um, there's no chance. Um, this also helps confirm to us that the autographs were inserted into, into product, meaning that whatever issue happened with these cards happened before the cards hit the secondary market. Very important to note. So, 
that brings us back to the wording from Tops. Because now that we know whatever issue happened, it happened before the cards got on the secondary market. So now we have to look at Tops and Lando Norris. They called it an illegitimate autograph um, in their conversation with Hannah. To me, they called it an error in the sticker application process. Now, again, when I, I mentioned earlier that Hannah reached out to them and could have gotten any random customer service rep. Uh, I would say that from their, their training, they probably just misused a misused that phrase, illegitimate autograph. They probably didn't know what to say. Probably caught off guard isn't the right word, but they probably looked into it and just said, okay, yeah, I know something's wrong. Just send it back. Um, whereas the person that I spoke to, I'm sure was likely briefed on whatever was happening. And um, that's why they went with the error in the sticker application process. Because when I, when I pressed them to tell me yes or no, um, whether or not the autograph was authentic, they would not confirm or deny the authenticity of the autograph. They never said, yes, it's real. They never said, no, it's fake. And I asked multiple times, multiple times. Um, so it's really important to remember that, you know, we both spoke to people that were down the food chain, but that I reached out, or uh, Hannah reached out to them and they reached out to me. So I probably got someone maybe a little bit higher up that might have had a little bit more knowledge and that might explain the, um, the difference in phrasing. So that leaves us with the possibility. So what's going on here? Now that we have all the information, what what possibly could be happening? Um, three options, all of them involving Topps wanting the stickers back. Number one would be that Topps knows the auto is not authentic, and that's why they want it back. And the only way that would happen is if either Lando picked up his phone in between races and twitching and all that stuff. He's like, hey, yo, Topps, uh, just by the way, I wanted to let you guys know... Um, those nine autographs that might be out there, the seven that have surfaced for sure, and maybe a couple more lurking in boxes that say Lando 4. Ha 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 ha, that wasn't me. Super unlikely, right? Yeah, pretty pretty um, implausible that Lando Norris did that, um, which would leave some sort of shenanigans in the chain of custody from the time that the autographs left Lando Norris and to the time they made it to the packout process. Someone grabbed a pen and wrote Lando 4 on a bunch of blank stickers. I... Again, highly unlikely, highly unlikely that um, those autographs are not authentic because the only way they would be not authentic is if someone else signed them. That probably didn't happen um, considering that all the other uh, stickers on that sheet were authentic and highly doubt that there was any um, after-the-fact shenanigans going on. Um, so probably probably not for that option. So I would say Tops knowing the autograph is not authentic and recalling it, is, that's not it. So that leaves us with Tops not being sure if the autograph is authentic and just kind of saying, all right, well, we're not sure, so we're going to go ahead and just, we're just going to fix the issue before there is an issue. So we'll just, we'll just get these back and we'll slap a correct sticker on there and um, that way there's, there's no question. And that would just be, uh, maybe, negligence probably isn't the right word, but, you know, we're, they're people, mistakes happen. They might have just missed it in their quality control checks, um, just didn't notice that a couple of the autographs were signed differently and didn't take the time to confirm... Um, whether or not they are good or bad. So it happens. Um, but the thing you have to remember is back, this is almost 20 years ago. It's hard to believe. Back about 20 years ago, this was a thing. The uh, athletes were actually encouraged when they first started doing sticker autographs, believe this or not. Auto um, athletes were actually encouraged to write fun stuff on there. So you go back to the early Don Russ products from uh, 2002, 2003, 2004, you'll have all kinds of people writing their alma mater, their nicknames, Bible verses, um, their like debuts in whatever sport it was, like awards that they won, all kinds of cool stuff. It was uh, such a fun like chase um, to hunt for those those items. Um, but now in the current autograph market, you have to remember that inscriptions are a huge thing. If you ever go to autograph signings, you know you'll pay an extra hundred, five hundred dollars for you know someone to sign three or four extra words to write a sentence for you. Um, so that's not really that's not really something that I expect to see too too often. And we really don't um, anymore on generic stickers. Usually when we have variations and stuff like that, it's for a specific reason. And that leads us to our third option, which is Tops knows the autographs are real and they still want them back. So the scenario where that exists is Tops knows they have some variation autographs, nickname autographs, whatever you want to call them, um, in the Lando 4s, and they were not supposed to be applied to this card. Um, they're meant for something else, a notable nickname set or an autograph variation set or what, whatever whatever it might be. Um, you see plenty of these sets uh, across all different sports. Um, and somehow, oopsie, oopsie poopsie, these stickers that were meant for those sets got slapped onto some Topps Chrome Gold Refractors by accident. And Topps wants them back because they, they need them to, to do 
whatever they were intended to do with or um, they were intended to be used for originally. So that would also explain the line that I received where there was an error in the sticker application process from the person likely a little bit higher up on the food chain. Um, so very interesting. Um, but those are the three possibilities. I mean, really, it's, that's that's what it boils down to. And then when you factor in this next thing that you're going to be looking at here, um, I, I think it's pretty clear which of those three is the um, proper landing space for us to, uh, to, to draw a conclusion uh, from. So here on the left, you have a screenshot of a YouTube video. Um, this is McLaren CEO, it's Zach Brown. Um, he was touring his house and he showed a little part of his personal collection. And one of the items that he had was a fire suit that was um, inscribed and gifted to him by Lando Norris. Now, on the right-hand side, you can see a blown-up image of the autograph where Lando Norris signs his name in print exactly how it appears on the Lando 4 autographs. So now, not only do we have almost an impossible scenario where these autographs were signed by someone else or after the fact, we also have evidence that Lando Norris does sign his name this way. And when you go one step further and compare the handwriting on one of the Lando 4s to the um, autograph you see on the fire suit, they look pretty close to identical. So all things considered, it's my professional opinion here. And um, you can say I'm biased because I own one of the copies. That's fine. But I'm, I'm a realist. Um, I think anyone who's dealt with me in the past knows that. But... My conclusion is there's only one conclusion, and that's these autographs are authentic 100%, and Topps made a mistake um, and, and applied the stickers to uh, a set of cards that they weren't supposed to be applied to. So I have no doubt that this is an authentic Lando Norris autograph. Um, if you were one of the other owners of this card, I wouldn't be too worried. Um, but I just wanted to pass along my info that I've been gathering for the past month or so, um, since I think I was the first person that um, knew about this, uh, so I was I was a little bit early to the uh, to the research game, but um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video here. Um, again, I apologize again for the video quality and um, the video editing. It's going to be poor. I, I do my best. I literally just <laughs> I found out that the Hannah posted her video this morning, so I taught myself how to do video editing today. Um, but. If you guys did enjoy the episode, there will be more on other topics coming soon. So hopefully the little bit of knowledge that you gained today helps you be like me, and that's be a card buff. Catch you next time.